Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to another great game played during the Altibox Norway Chess tournament, um, over the board tournament held in Stavanger uh, in Norway, very beautiful city. And uh, I would like to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen, who's gonna play as White and Jan Krzysztof Duda. Grandmaster from Poland who's gonna play as Black. Uh, yesterday I showed you the game where Jan Krzysztof Duda won against Magnus Carlsen and that means um, the historical 125 uh, unbeaten game streak came to the end and Magnus said uh, that he played uh, too aggressive, um, too attractive and too uh, risky chess just to hold it for longer. So one day it had to happen, uh, you know, that he uh, lose that streak uh, and now definitely he was a bit enraged and wanted to show that he can crush his opponent so without further ado let's see this aggressive and uh, very very attractive interesting game we have d4 by magnus carlsen d5 c4 c6 so um slav defense and now knight f3 is possible knight c3 or exchange variation magnus went for e3 very silent move now the bishop defends the the c4 and it's good to mention that once white gonna play d3 or uh, e2 this this pawn usually takes on c4 so uh, white actually has to you know play two moves um, and lose the tempo with taking the the pawn uh, so we have knight f6 we have knight c3 we have e6 semi slav defense uh, setup and now b3 so what magnus want to want to do is first bring the bishop uh, on this very long diagonal and now if another bishop is moved for example to d3 it can actually stay uh, still stay on this diagonal which is a very attractive diagonal because now if the white takes the the pawn on c4 the b pawn can actually get to the center so black would achieve nothing actually uh, lose the central pawn and white would have the the much stronger position in the center and uh Jan Krzysztof Duda answer with b6, knight b to d7 is the most popular here, bishop b4, pinning that knight is also possible, bishop d6 uh, is also very popular, but as I said we have b6, and everything is fine with this move, it was also played uh, plenty of times. We have bishop b2, bishop b7 as planned, uh, bishop d3, as I said the, the exchanging the pawns would not make much sense now, we have knight b to d7, and now knight f3 is the main line, but Magnus uh, usually deviates from the from the main lines in some moment and he played knight g to e2 uh, with the idea of bringing the knight to g3 and then push e4. Uh, we have bishop d6, uh, we have castle, castle uh, and now knight g3 as planned and now uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda doesn't wait for, for any e4 moves and complications in the center and he strikes first, so he plays c5. Uh, and this is very symmetrical uh, position, I mean not very symmetrical, because of course then the knights are uh, completely, you know, uh, placed in the different uh, squares. Uh, but you know, you need to have a deep understanding of this position, what can potentially happen. Now this position, we have two games in the database and one of them was really by Peter Leko as black and so definitely everything is fine with that but now this tension in the center um, should be resolved so somehow so C takes on D5, Magnus Carlsen uh, is the first who gonna remove the tensions in the center. We have C takes on D4 with the attack on the knight, so uh, knight C to E4 with the attack on the bishop. And if bishop uh, want to stay on this attractive diagonal, uh, it's actually not really possible. Uh, this move is not possible because the pawn gonna be pushed. And once the bishop is on the, on the B8, that the rook gonna be locked and um, not really possible. And B Bishop e5 is uh, from the other hand can be attacked by f4 so it's uh, also not recommended this is why we have bishop g3 so Jan Krzysztof Duda is actually forced to uh, give up his uh, pair of bishops we have knight g3 and now d takes on e3 d takes on e6 e takes on f2 with check rook f2 and now f takes on e6 so black actually are up the the pawn one pawn uh, but this is very weak pawn and it's very easily to be eliminated the bishop can come to this diagonal um the queen can of course attack this um this pawn as well and so on 
So uh, it's not really recommended to, to hold that pawn. Uh, we have queen e2 now attacking that pawn and we have one game uh, in the database uh, where uh, grandmasters uh, play rook f7. So Grandmaster Pashikian won against uh, Grandmaster Matlakov and um, Pashikian as white just, uh, you know, pick up this pawn. Uh, and after Bishop d5, the game was pretty interesting, Queen f5, and the game could continue. The point is the knight even cannot move uh, to attack the queen because there is this battery working on the uh, on the diagonal. So uh, very interesting. However, Jan Krzysztof Duda went for knight c5, much more active move, now uh, attacking the bishop bishop twice and also defending the, the pawn on e6. So he decided just, you know, defending that for a while um, can be the best idea here. We have bishop c2 avoiding the, the losing of the bishop and now bishop a6 attacking the queen. Queen e1 still keeping attention on e6 uh, and now first mistake by uh, by Jan Krzysztof Duda he actually want to overprotect the, the pawn because this knight the only defender are gonna be you know kicked from the from this outpost very easily so definitely this pawn are uh, gonna be lost but this is actually inevitable and uh, black doesn't have a chances actually to hold that pawn and uh, what he could play is something like knight d5 and after exchanging the rooks because something has to be done on them on the f file rook f8 uh, queen f8 uh, and then after b4 this knight actually can jump to very attractive d3 uh, and now of course then the knight is um, defended by the bishop and also attacking the queen attacking the bishop so there is a huge chance to actually exchange one of these bishops and these bishops are the real bishops from hell maybe not yet but if their power gonna be unleashed that's gonna be uh you know devastating so it's good you know to actually exchange uh, one of the bishops for the for the knight uh what could happen in the game is queen e6 and after queen f7 just exchange the queens uh, and then after rook f1, let's say king e6, uh, white would have a decision to make, uh, maybe exchange one of the bishops, um, this one or this one, uh, maybe this way, that would be that would be the one of the options, uh, or just, you know, preserve the bishop, play something like bishop g7, and make some unbalanced uh, position uh, where black would have the two pawns on the on the queen side and um, and one pawn um, on the on the king side from the other hand so uh, that that was possible however we have queen e8 so Jan Krzysztof Duda decided that uh, he want to actually defend the pawn uh, we have rook d1 and now again how to continue rook d8 uh, was possible uh, and after exchanging just give up this pawn uh, of course b4 is the is on the table knight c to d7 uh, and after queen e6 uh, king h8 and it's still playable these knights actually you know protect each other they are very very solid uh, but the white of course stands slightly better because of this very powerful pair of bishops. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda decided that he want to control the c file. So we have rook c8. So if the knight is uh, kicked, then of course he can, uh, you know, control the open c file. Uh, we have b4 kicking the knight. And now there is the problem with that knight, where to place them, because if you want to bring um, the knight to very natural, you know, knight c to d7, the problem is bishop a4, now pinning that knight, which is very, very annoying, because this knight doesn't support the, the knight on f6, which is attacked twice, there is no problem now, uh, but if black, for example, would like to, you know, uh, move the knights, maybe this way, of course, there is, the, there is still the pin, have to remember about that, uh, these rooks can be of course exchange and if the queen still wants to uh, keep an eye on e6 then king f8 uh, but then white has a very attractive knight e4 very strong move now with tempo because there is the thread with fork but also making a space for the queen so here is the problem queen e7 maybe uh, but then queen g3 anyway a knight um, from the seven rank to f6 uh, but now simply exchange knight f6 knight f6 and uh, b5 and kicking them the bishop bishop b7 and the problem is that there is always bishop a3 now on the board and uh, 
and uh, White just gonna win the exchange and uh, have a very very comfortable game. So knight c to d7, it looks like really great. However, it's not that attractive. This is why Jan Krzysztof Duda went for knight b7. Now uh, keeping an eye on the on the d6, just in case that this knight would like to you know jump over there, but also gives the opportunity uh, to jump to d8. It doesn't look really great, but from the other hand, it could potentially support the the pawn on e6. Uh, and Magnus Carlsen played knight e4, he starts his attack and now look at the position, white pieces, all of them are concentrated on the uh, on the on the black's position and even this knight can uh, actually can come this way or this way and it's very very actually, uh, it looks like you know very very dangerous and uh, and from the other hand this two pieces are, you know, on the far, far away from the action. Uh, also, this rook doesn't help much. I mean, it can be, you know, exchanged for this bishop, but uh, that's that's all what this can this rook can do. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda, if he plays, for example, knight e4, the problem is after queen e4, uh, there is the, the checkmate. So queen g6 probably would have to be played, but then queen e5. When what you're gonna do now? Uh, you still have some threats uh, on this diagonal. Your queen is under attack now, and if you take the the bishop, there is the problem. Rook c2, and uh, you win the exchange. White wins the exchange uh, again. Of course, the the rook cannot be taken because of the checkmate on g7. So very difficult position. Uh, Jan Krzysztof Duda play knight to d5, and look at. The the pieces. The pieces are completely um, not coordinated now. Definitely huge problem. Uh, exchanging the rooks, of course, is mandatory now. So rook f8, uh, queen f8, and now the bishop is under attack because doesn't have the protection uh, because the rook was exchanged. So uh, we have bishop b1. Bishop b3 could be maybe uh, a little bit stronger. Keep the bishop on this diagonal, but Magnus Carlsen decided that he wants to stay um, on this diagonal and point at the g7 and h7 squares. Uh, and here was the decisive mistake but Jan, by Jan Krzysztof Duda. However, it's the very difficult to blame here because what to play in this position? The engine recommends something like h6. However, it doesn't solve any problems of, of black. Uh, we have queen b4, which, which looks like a very, very strong move uh, because now the bishop, unprotected bishop, is under attack and also there is the threat to exchange the queens. Moreover, if white would like to um, defend the bishop and play something like queen f2 of course this is not possible because of the bishop um, the queen d2 is not possible because ex exchanging the queens is of course in favor of black black uh, just a reminder are two pawns up so the end game would be uh, would be very very easy to play by by black. Uh, so uh, queen f2, but it doesn't work. Rook f8, and if the queen even come to uh, b2, just to protect the bishop and also keep an eye on the on the knight, there is the killer move. Boom, bishop d3, uh, and now the rook cannot take because there is the checkmate threat. So that is the first problem. And if queen takes on d3, then this bishop gonna gonna collapse and white um, gonna be two pawns down in uh, in rather losing position without the pair of bishops and so on. So uh, that's not even possible. But there is one move which is winning for white, only one move. So you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? I hope you spotted that that knight f6, very nice tactic, is just winning. And now the point is the knight cannot take because the queen is hanging now uh, and the knight is uh, protecting the queen, of course. G takes on f6, uh, could be slightly better, but still queen e6 actually wins the rook and the game. So uh, that would be very, very simple uh, to win, still preserve the, the pair of bishops uh, and being them the exchange up, of course, it's uh, enough to win the game. Jan Krzysztof Duda played 
king h8, but still we have queen e6 with the attack on the rook. And in this position, Jan Krzysztof Duda play uh, rook a8. The best move in the position, knight e7 doesn't work as well. I mean, it's much better because it actually defends the, the rook. Uh, the knight is also defended. The problem is that white doesn't really need to be hurry uh, in executing all the advantage bishop a1 just to hide the bishop uh, is good enough and now even if black try to exchange at uh, the rooks um, then white doesn't need to agree uh, there are still you know some ideas with 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 queen to e1 checkmate so white have to be very careful for now the rook and the queen of course uh guarding that but if this queen would like to move for example to f7 that can be the problem white doesn't need to exchange the rooks that is the that is the point knight d7 with beautiful threat Queen h6, that would be awesome threat as this bishop pins the, uh, pins the pawn. Uh, double checkmate idea and threat, uh, that would be uh, just devastating. Knight g6 would be forced, but then uh, the knight can be of course exchanged. Then queen f7, another checkmate, so rook g8 also would be forced. Then queen g6, another checkmate, and black cannot defend everything. Uh, queen h4 for now, this is the, the last move, but again, again, what white would like to do is just bring the rook and checkmate this way, but there is the, the still the checkmate, so h3, another silent move, uh, white doesn't need to be in hurry. This position is just, you know, easily to be uh, won. However, it's still, you know, uh, just played some defensive moves as well. Uh, and now, for example, after queen h7, just avoid exchanging of the queens, queen g5. Uh, and now this knight is gonna come and deliver a checkmate this way. Uh, or maybe this way the knight can actually cover, for example, f7, but the knight can also jump to, to g6. And this is another problem. And even queen h6 um, doesn't help much because simply now it's the time to exchange. I hope you see that uh, rook d7 and this is gonna be a, a checkmate beautiful uh, checkmate with the double check and uh, you cannot do anything about that uh, you can make a space for the king but it doesn't really matter knight g6 anyway and that's gonna end up with the also very interesting checkmate so uh, knight e7 is not enough Jan Krzysztof Duda went for rook a8 but after queen d five he resigned he resigned because he's down in the material he just lost the the piece and he cannot get the piece back if he plays something like g takes on f6 we're gonna have a checkmate uh, and if he play queen b2 just eliminating uh this this bishop the problem is queen e4 uh, delivers another checkmate where and you cannot do anything g6 gonna be made with the uh, queen e7 and this checkmate is actually undefendable uh, all you can do is sacrifice the queen uh, but of course this is also uh, winning for white and checkmate comes in another move queen d5 that's the last move in the game Jan Krzysztof Duda resigned Magnus Carlsen just outplayed <laughs> Jan Krzysztof Duda, that was the, 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 his revenge. Beautiful, very aggressive uh, and attractive game. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Uh, if you want me to cover some of the games, just drop the comment which game would you like me to cover. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another games on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and... See you in the next one.